Hi, and thanks for joining me in this discussion of meteorological instrumentation. And specifically, we're going to talk about design and selection of meteorological instruments in this video. And we're going to look at characteristics of these meteorological instruments. We're going to try and come up with some terms that we can use to describe the char characteristics of meteorological instruments. And here are the terms we're going to talk about in this video. We'll start out with range first. Range basically is the region which you make your measurement. Typically it's expressed by the top and bottom values of that instrument. An example here is a bimetal thermometer. The bimetal thermometer shows the scale going from 120 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to minus 40. So in this example, the range is 120 down to minus 40. That's the range. That's where you make your measurements. Capacity is similar to range um, in that it measures the distance, the upper and lower values, but it does that in terms of a difference. The difference between the upper value and the lower value is considered the capacity, and sometimes it's called the dynamic range. Going back to our bimetal thermometer, the top was 120 and the bottom was minus 40. If you take the difference between those, it's 160. So we'd say the capacity of this thermometer is 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Accuracy is how well a sensor is able to measure uh, the true value or the accepted value um, of what you're trying to measure. And we usually measure accuracy, um, giving some uncertainty. And when we state uncertainty, we usually have a plus and minus sign and then a value or a percentage or some other way of describing the accuracy. Let's look at an example. Here is a thermometer. And you can see that uh, our thermometer right now is measuring about, oh, I think it's about 35 degrees Celsius. Is it really 35? If we have an uncertainty of plus or minus one degree Celsius, as stated by the manufacturer, it could be as low as 34 and as high as 36. So we would expect the true value to be someplace in there. It's not necessarily 35, but it's in that range around that value that was measured or indicated. Resolution is the smallest change that an observation can detect or sensor can detect. Usually this is stated by the manufacturer. An example here, and usually um, the resolution is indicated by the markings on the scale, or if it's a digital readout, that's a little bit more difficult. So you'll have to go into the manual and see what they're calling the resolution. But um, in this case, it would be probably a resolution of maybe one degree Celsius, unless the manufacturer tells you something different. If you look at uh, satellite imagery, um, satellite imagery has resolution, visible satellite imagery, at least the old visible satellite imagery had a resolution of one kilometer, meaning that's the smallest thing that can be seen on visible satellite imagery. Whereas infrared, imagery has a resolution of four, meaning the smallest cloud that they can see with an infrared satellite image has to be bigger than four kilometers across. Sensitivity is another term that's used to describe meteorological instruments. And sensitivity by definition is the ratio in an output magnitude to a change in input after a steady state has been achieved. Mathematically, this is what it looks like. Um, it'll be the change in what you're trying to measure, in this case, a change in temperature, um, underneath the change in height. So you'll get a change in height with a change in temperature, and that's your sensitivity. Looking at the thermometer, uh, talking about the change in height with the change in temperature, if we're able to measure the distance between uh, 30 and 40, that would be a 10 degree change. Um, and then we'd measure the distance. So the distance divided by the, uh, the change in temperature. Um, so that is uh, sensitivity. Some instruments are more sensitive. Some instruments are less sensitive. When we say we have an instrument that is more sensitive, it means that there is a bigger change in the sensor 
for uh, a, the, a same or smaller value of, in this case, temperature, but whatever you're trying to measure. So let's compare the sensitivity of these two instruments. Here on the left, you got a pool thermometer, liquid and glass, the little bobby pool thermometer. On the right, you've got the world's largest thermometer in Baker, California. Which one do you think has the greatest sensitivity? Which one has the biggest change in distance for a change in temperature? And you'd probably be right if you said it was the one on the right because you get a much bigger change in height with a change in temperature. This is the mathematical expression and also what it looks like on a graph. So sensitivity is the change for a thermometer, is the change in height of the liquid and glass thermometer for a change in temperature. And you can do this for any instrument. You can look at uh, the change in voltage per a millibar of pressure or the change in the um, cup, the speed of the cup anemometer uh, based upon a change in wind speed. Uh, that's what sensitivity is. So the plot of sensitivity to indicate high or low sensitivity, looking at this, you notice that a change in temperature gives you a change in the height of mercury or alcohol in the thermometer. If you look at the difference in the change in temperature, you see there's a big change in temperature, but you have a small change in the expansion of mercury. So this would be low sensitivity, big change in temperature, small height change. This would be comparable to the pool thermometer. Here's another example showing you a more, uh, a, a, a different curve, different sensitivity for a liquid and glass thermometer. Notice that for more or less the same change in temperature, you get a huge change in the height of mercury in the column of that thermometer. So this indicates high sensitivity. You have a big change in height with temperature. And once again, this could be any type of meteorological instrument, but we're looking specifically at thermometers in these examples. So I hope that gives you some idea of how we use uh, terms to describe the characteristics of different meteorological instruments. And there'll be another video where we talk about other terms that we use for to describe these characteristics also.